This evening we turn in Holy Scripture to one of the minor prophets, Zephaniah. The fourth from the last book in the Old Testament, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. Zephaniah chapter 3. The concluding chapter of Zephaniah's prophecy. Woe to her that is filthy and polluted to the oppressing city. She obeyed not the voice. She received not correction. She trusted not in the Lord. She drew not near to her God. Her princes within her are roaring lions. Her judges are evening wolves. They gnaw not the bones till the morrow. Her prophets are light and treacherous persons. Her priests have polluted the sanctuary. They have done violence to the law. The just Lord is in the midst thereof. He will not do iniquity. Every morning doth he bring his judgment to light. He faileth not. But the unjust knoweth no shame. I have cut off the nations. Their towers are desolate. I have made their streets waste that none passeth by. Their cities are destroyed, so that there is no man, that there is none inhabitant. I said, Surely thou wilt fear me, thou wilt receive instruction, so their dwelling should not be cut off, howsoever I punish them. But they rose early and corrupted all their doings. Therefore wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prey, for my determination is to gather the nations, that I may assemble the kingdoms, to pour upon them mine indignation, even all my fierce anger, for all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. For then will I turn to the people a pure language, that they all may call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my suppliants, even the daughter of my dispersed, shall bring mine offering. In that day shalt thou not be ashamed for all thy doings, wherein thou hast transgressed against me. For then I will take the way out of the midst of thee them that rejoice in thy pride, and thou shalt no more be haughty because of my holy mountain. I will also leave in the midst of thee an afflicted and poor people, and they shall trust in the name of the Lord. The remnant of Israel shall not do iniquity, nor speak lies, neither shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth, for they shall feed and lie down, and none shall make them afraid. Sing, O daughter of Zion, shout, O Israel, be glad and rejoice with all the heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord hath taken away thy judgments. He hath cast out thine enemy. The King of Israel, even the Lord, is in the midst of thee. Thou shalt not see evil any more. In that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear thou not. And to Zion, let not thine hands be slack. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save, he will rejoice over thee with joy, he will rest in his love, he will joy over thee with singing. I will gather them that are sorrowful for the solemn assembly who are of thee, to whom the reproach of it was a burden. Behold, at that time I will undo all that afflict thee, and I will save her that halteth, and gather her that was driven out, and I will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. At that time will I bring you again, even in the time that I gather you, for I will make you a name and a praise among all the people of the earth. When I turn back your captivity before your eyes, saith the Lord. Call your attention this evening to Zephaniah 3, verse 17. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. 
He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. Beloved in the Lord Jesus Christ, God sent the prophet Zephaniah to his people at a very dark time in the history of the Old Testament. Much of the nation had already been lost. The apostasy of the ten tribes, their departure from God's word and precepts had brought God's wrath upon them and scattered them never again to be gathered. They were swallowed by the world. Only the kingdom of Judah remained, the church. But she also had become a terrible mixture. It was during this time, our children may remember, that Josiah became king in Judah. Josiah was a godly king. He became king when he was only eight years old. Quite something, isn't it? Eight years old, serving as king over God's people. He had to have help, but he served faithfully. Here we are, the 18th year of his reign. Josiah was age 26, and suddenly the law of God is discovered. It had been lost. There were others like Josiah still striving to live godly. It's always the case in God's church on this earth, there's always a remnant and afflicted and poor people, as we read in verse 12, for them Zephaniah is sent by God. Although he must speak hard words of judgment, they are words of salvation to those who were like Josiah. The sad thing was, it was too late for reform in Judah. Jehovah will execute his judgment, but a remnant will be saved. It's upon that background that suddenly the faithfulness of our God appears as the sun breaking over the eastern horizon at dawn of day. Even though God's people live in the midst of darkness and in the shadow of death, Jehovah mercifully appears to them and approaches them with the light of the gospel and he shines that light upon them in all its brilliance that his people might praise him in the certain conviction that salvation is theirs. How beautiful were those tidings of great joy received by those who had seen so much grief and sorrow because of the sinfulness of their own sins. The promises of God bubble over from the mouth of his prophet Zephaniah. Sing, O daughter of Zion, shout, O Jerusalem, O Israel, be glad and rejoice with all the heart, O daughter of Jerusalem, the Lord hath taken away thy judgments. He hath cast out thine enemy. The King of Israel, even the Lord, is in the midst of thee. Thou shalt not see evil any more. In that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear thou not, and to Zion, Let not thine hands be slack. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. 